All right, guys, here we have game two of the Smogan Tour Season 27 Finals. Solwind is up 1-0, having one black and white. And this Aorus game is going to be a clash of bulky offense teams. Sta uh, Solwind's looks to be a little more on the standard side from preview, while Luigi's running the more uncommon mana fee for defense and uh, Mega Lop Honey for offense. Now, in tandem, it seems like a good idea to cover both ends of that spectrum, but Solwind's team falls more in the bulky offense slash balance kind of style. And those two are going to falter a little bit here because he has three Pokemon that outrun and smack Manaphy for a ton of damage, four once Metagross Mega evolves, and Clefable and even Lando for Intimidate to fall back on against Lophoney. Uh, Luigi's other Pokemon are also not particularly notable in their threat level. And, uh, yeah, so I think Sowen should be able to handle this, because he's not just trying to wall them forever, he's also going to be dishing out a ton of damage, especially if it's Focus Blast Keldeo, because that Oko's Tangrowth from full, if it's Rocky Helmet, which is very likely seeing as Luigi has Latios for Keldeo, and uh, it will also cream Manaphy, and just to make it a lot harder to check, because if Manaphy and Tangrowth are at full health, then you can kind of play around the Keldeo, but if it's Focus Blast, that changes everything. So, uh, on Luigi's end, he does get a sleep off with Tangro if it, it is Rocky Helmet. And he's going to have to p play really aggressively with Gliscor. Uh, if Clefable's Ice Beam, that makes things even tougher. But uh, if it's not, then that's going to be his biggest window, you know, threaten immediately. Since uh, Solwyn's Gliscor counters, mainly Keldeo and Metagross if it is Ice Punch. Latias is kind of a check, uh, then that will be his biggest weapon. But if Fable has Ice Beam, then it's going to be really difficult. So, uh, let's get this show on the road. So, Luigi leads off with Tangrowth. It will have to run from Keldeo and Latios, but it does threaten to sleep powder on everything else. So, Solon decides to put up his rocks and eat the sleep. I guess uh, if Luigi goes for uh, Defog with Latios, then he can capitalize on that with his Metagross. Although he's probably not going to get those rocks back up for a long time because Lando sleeping is a free mana fee. So this is a double status Tangrowth, paralyzing Clefable on the switch and even knocking off. So uh, this Tangrowth has done pretty much as much as it can do against Clefable. And uh, now Heatran comes in with the unfortunate full para uh, as Clef tried to do something. He Calm Minds. Now, Heatran these days tends to run defensive variants. But uh, if you look at Luigi's team, it's his best defense against the Fable by far. So it's no surprise that he has taunt. However, uh, Solwind is not really... He forced the issue uh, with Taunt in the first place, so now he knows he has it, so it's not going to be Protect Toxic. So that could be uh, crucial if Keldeo has to switch in later. So Luigi thinks, hey, he's probably going to want to get out of there, but uh, if you'll notice, nothing else wants to really switch into Heatran, which is uh, not as big a deal if because uh, he could eventually switch out, you know, pivot with Landris uh, or something. But, uh, this is Magma Storm, so Clefable cannot get out of there, and he's not getting the Moonblast dropped. Losing Leftovers was really, really big there, but he also didn't really have much of a better Tangrowth switch. So, uh, he is kind of forced into this pickle. Uh, then with Lava Plume, then you can usually outstall Tran pretty easily, but uh, Magma Storm, with the Leftovers gone, since otherwise it'd probably get PP stalled, then uh, is going to be more of an issue. The first full para, I think, hurt uh, hurt a lot because that's potentially two calm minds. But um, and that could make a difference, seeing how little Magma Storm is doing after one um, one calm mind. And he's not getting the drops either. And uh, yeah, he f tried to force the issue against the soft whale earlier, but it's no avail. So he's pretty much going to have to sacrifice his Clefable. He doesn't want uh, Latios getting trapped and slapped. 
So we figured, you know what, I'm going to out-offense him anyway. And Keldio comes in after this, and it is dangerous. Because, I mean, even he doesn't even have to go for that focus blast. He can just spam Skull, and um, Luigi really has no choice but to go to Latios unless he wants to throw away his mana fee. And uh, Latios is going to get worn down very quickly, so he'll gladly take that defog if it means damage on it for Keldeo to become more of a threat later. Of course, this also means Lop Honey is more of a threat, but it's still doable as long as he is not Cavalier with uh, Metagross, and if Landorus is also uh, kept with Rocky Helmet. So Gliscor is down, he decides, you know, with Clefable out of the picture, I'm not even going to try that Ice Beam shit. So... Um, I'm just going to toss it away and get a free setup with Manaphy, a big threat, but again, it's probably not going to take more than one KO. Uh, if any, because Magnezone with Scarf is a good one-time switch, so no KO this time around. He just goes for the Ice Beam and gets the freeze. He was clearly aiming for Latios, but that is just horrible, because uh, even worse, with Gliscor down, Ma uh, Magnezone spams the hell out of Bolt Switch. So it's not even like he needs a Thunderbolt. I mean... Thunderbolt really would do a lot, because uh, any damage on Latios with Rocks Up is good, especially because he can spam it a little. It's not like Latios immediately threatens it. Rocky Helmet Tangrel taking damage, you know, fine by me, um, or by Solwind, I guess, since that makes Metagross's life a lot easier. So this freeze was just horrible. So now he's not going to... And it's leftovers, too. Uh, so, I mean, I guess that doesn't make too much of a difference. Um... But yeah, it would be at full, and every inch matters when you're trying to chip down a man at feet. Shut up, you stupid ad. Um, so, he's forced to go to Latios. If this is Specs, he's just going to really try to rip into it with Draco. Um, as he assumed, uh, uh, he was not going to Ice Beam again. That would be ridiculous. It would be Tail Glow or Surf. Surf being preferable, but no, he tricks the Choice Scarf. Uh, and locks it in an Ice Beam, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, also, regarding Keldeo, then, you know, as long as he watches out for Fake Out, which can be done with Lando, and then switching back on the minus one Ice Punch, still out of range, and trading kills and all that, it should still be okay. But uh, the Mana Fee is now plus three locked into uh, Ice Beam. So Metagross can evolve, and he misses Zen Headbutt. So this is just... Um, a cluster of horrible, horrible, low-variance things going on right now. And the plus three is looking like it's going to roll for a three at KO. So, the Zen Headbutt is very clearly a two at KO. So, that Magazine Freeze is just ruining everything. So now he's uh, really losing health on his whole team just to not die to the Mana Feast. Since Keldeo can take two. And I think, uh, I guess since Metagross could have Bullet Punch... It figures that would be preferable to completely losing it and still taking damage on Keldeo that would leave it in Lop Honey range, or very, very close to Lop Honey range. So, uh, he goes for the sword and down goes Manaphy, but not without completely changing the game. So here comes the Lop Honey with a free return. Um, I'm thinking it might be somewhat prudent to go to Magazone. Um, on return, and then get Lando in on high jump kick just to take the least amount of total damage, or least amount of damage, um, switching in, which could be crucial for ice punch rolls later, but he goes right to Lando for that intimidate, um, I guess he can go to zone on ice, or something like that, and just kind of try to keep drawing him in, but he, he comes out of fake out, so that actually ended up being a lot better, oh, I forgot, um, yeah, uh, he was not immediately faster than Keldeo, but... Yeah, here comes Latios on the sleeping Lando. Does he double out? No, he stays in, tries to force Rocky Helmet, because uh, it would be a 2 KO, but he'd be a lot of chip, and for Bullet Punch Metagross, that would be big. So here comes Magnazone. He's still not out of it if he thaws out as he soaks up the Draco. Um, and, I mean, does he try to thaw out? Does I mean, Flash Cannon... I mean, even if he does thaw out, it's more of being a, I don't know, it's more about being somewhat of a threat rather than a, eh, I don't know, the Flash Cannon would definitely be big for Metagross's Bullet Punch, because if you're not risking speed ties, because uh, even minus two at this range, that's too little, so I'm not sure how much of a difference the Magnezone being frozen made here. It was more the Manaphy thing, because um, 
don't know, I don't think he's chancing Ladia switching into Kelio at this point anyway. But yeah, now minus four. If, if the Metagross is Pursuit, then that's great. Um, but if not, then the Rocky Helm and Tangrowth is at full health, so he has to like double the Keldeo. And just to prevent that from happening, that well, that would have been uh, assuming it's Focus Blast. He doesn't do that. He tries to Ice Punch, which isn't going to get him far. Because at this point, I mean, I guess it's pretty close to over anyway. Um, I mean, you don't give up at this point. But yeah, Kel um, he just get, gives away the Heatran, just so, which is weird. Because if it's Helmet Tangrowth, then you don't really care if he takes out, uh, if he crits your freezes you because he's going down to Rocky Helmet anyway, so I thought that was weird, but I guess against these two, then Tran is also useless. I just figured maybe save it for a sack you actually might need, like, against, uh, um, against Keldeo or something. And I mean, even there, even if you get crit on the switch and it's into a KO range, then you just can switch to Heatran then and regen out and still have a living Tangrowth, so, I don't know. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. So, uh, he's in Hydro range now, so he's going to take him out with that. He's more accurate than Focus Blast, and the damage difference won't matter if he does choke and go to Latios. But yeah, uh, at this point then, this is pretty over, so that was a really unfortunate turn of events. Um, it changed the entire game, I think, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Solo definitely should have won this. This this could have been it. This could have been the series, but now it's going to be decided in Sun and Moon. So, uh... We're going to go to there now. I was originally going to do it in this third video, but this, I, this game was kind of short, so... Alright, what the heck happened there? Okay, so, uh, Sun and Moon, we see Solwind running uh, Sand, which is extremely popular right now, uh, going to be Mega Tyranitar, well, uh, he's got a backbone uh, with some, he's got a really bulky backbone, he's got two regenerators and a Gliscor, and his offense is going to come from uh, Mega Transfer being a beast on its own, but it's going to be rocking, so no, not much of a DD threat. Um, but the main offensive threat is, of course, Exegrill. While Luigi is running something more bulky offensive, he's got Mega Mawile. Uh, I mean, he's got bulk of his own. He's got Torn for the regenerating Defog Rocky Helmet goodness that we know and love from it. Uh, Lando's got Intimidate, and Tapu Fini handles Ash Greninja and keeps off hazards, and uh, keeps status away, which can be crucial for its teammates. So, matchup-wise, I mean, if it's Rocky Helmet Tangrowth, which seems likely since he's got Toxapex uh, for Greninja, alongside a bona fide Dark Resist, uh, which even brings Sandstorm Chip, then... Uh, that can stave off Maw Wild decently. Hmm. Tapu Fini can be kind of annoying with Nature's Madness stuff. If it's a knockoff, that's really obnoxious. Um, the right Torn set is, well, I guess not so much with Drachi, but, you know, knockoff and U turn. So he's got to be careful about giving that a ton of, uh, ton of switches. I think if, uh, like, if he baits in, if he gets up rocks. Uh, assuming his stealth rocker is Lando and Jirachi is the scarf set, which is the standard. Then uh, he can get up rocks pretty easily because uh, his only hazard removal is Excadrill, unless he's running Defog Gliscor, but I think on a team like this, he needs the offensive threat of Swords Dance. Yeah, so if he gets, gets those rocks and draws in Tangrowth and then starts causing U turn havoc with the Torn, then I think that could be a threat. Um. Yeah, I think. Otherwise, he can handle most of the stuff in the long term because of Regenerator being able to outlast Fini. Um, Pex can even stay in and go for a burn once Misty Terrain runs out. And, yeah, I mean, Mawile is a huge threat, so never count it out, but I think 
yeah, this this will be a tough one. Uh, if I'm missing something, then please forgive me. It's been a while since I've thought seriously about Sun and Moon. All right, let's get this show on the road. All right, so Finney leads off against Hoxapex. Um, Nature's Madness is annoying, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge deal. Instead, he goes right on the offensive and goes to Mawile, knowing that Skull Burns are not going to be a problem in Mystic Terrain. So someone does not want to deal with this because of Thunder Punch, but he's got Tangrowth at full health, so big deal for now, anyway. So, Mawile evolves... And goes for a substitute. So we're getting, we're seeing sub punch, which is nice for Heatran, I suppose. But uh, it's not going to do. It's not even going to break half against Tangrowth, I believe. As uh, HP Fire and Helmet. So Mawile's already really, really down. Of course, he got Tangrowth, which is pretty much the ideal Tangrowth switch, barring stuff like Sleep Powder and Sun Spore, since it is not affected by Misty Terrain. It is not grounded. But he's going to have to get out of there and regens out. And, Hex loses its sludge, which is admittedly annoying. Uh, he's got Baneful Bunker, and Torn gets poisoned, so that helps out Tangrowth a lot. Of course, he's going to have to be careful now that Pex does not have lefties, because Trantar still is not a Greninja switch, unless you're really far ahead. But, uh, so, I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, Titar was a good initial switch. I guess he just assumed that it would uh, U-turn immediately. I think uh, knockoff is... You can assume that first. Because um, against that team, the knockoff was very free. So I think T-Tar was a fair move first, because Hex's lefties are important. But I guess uh, he, they also would have been removed at some point, regardless. Um, unless you try to you know dance around it with Glisco or something. And he got the poison on it, so it's okay. He scalds and Jirachi shows itself to be leftovers. So that means it's probably the Stealth Rocker. And uh, Lando is going to probably be Choice Scarf. Unless he's running the most unlikely of sense of Choice Scarf for Ninja, but I think it's going to be Ash. So, because it just makes sense. It's the most well rounded offense. I mean, it could be some sort of a Z. Uh, speaking of, it could be some sort of a Z set to bait something, but. I mean, what are you really baiting, you know? Uh, if it's Z-Dig, then, you know, Magirna and Toxapex aren't really threats. I just think uh, Ash Greninja gives it the most potential with uh, priority for random offense and just being incredibly threatening, as it always is. It's just a safer bet. You know, you assume Ash until you find out uh, otherwise. And you'll find out quickly because you see Protein. Anyway, uh, speaking of Z, he goes right for it and smacks that Lando really hard, so... Exodrill looking scary. I mean, Greninja's still there with the Shuriken, but it's still on a switch it. He doubles back to Jirachi on Gliscor. Uh, Exodrill avoided the paralysis from Body Sand thanks to Terrain. And uh, now he's not going to get up those rocks on Gliscor. He goes right to Torn. So, I mean, Supersonic Sky Strike. I mean, this fits as his Z user since it's not going to be this guy. And that Hurricane does a lot. So he's got to be careful of that Sky Strike, and he can also keep up the pressure with U-Turn. But he's not going to blow it. He's not going to blow it on the T-Tar Jirachi. So when uh, Smartly stays in, and I assume... Oh, he just goes for a Skull. I thought he was going to recover. Okay. So, uh... Terrain's back up. Someone does not have T-Spikes, so that could have been a problem. Spinning against T-Spikes Pex really, really blows, unless you're taunting it at every opportunity, which this Tornadus is clearly not. So Jirachi uh, gets up the rocks. He's going to try and force drill the spin uh, so he can't threaten. But it uh, it's a nice safe way of... It's, it's a safe move. Because if he stays in, then rocks. And if x comes in, he feels pressure to spin. Because rocks are what can make the pyramid start to fall apart. Uh, I don't know about that one because he just iron heads for like zero damage. Also, this might not be Z-Fly. It could be Z-Fighting uh, Torn. Yeah, I don't know about that Iron Head. I thought that was pretty bad. Uh, since he just didn't accomplish much, and, you know, Iron Head for Chip is nice, but don't you want to take advantage of the fact that he spins and, you know, you get something in for free? Like, maybe Greninja starts start spiking? I mean, Solwyn does not have a... If Solwyn's hazard removal is 
this and you know de- it's not defunct with sword swords dance then you know you want to get those spikes of greninja asap so i think i think that would have been a much better move at least he keeps the pressure up here with u turn and goes back to finney to get up the terrain so uh he misses a madness and this is going to just be a very self-explanatory turn i mean we see how both sides have threats to the other, but I think Solwyn's playing uh, generally better. So he knocks off, and the Torn is now super confirmed to be Z. He did not want to lose the leftovers on Jirachi. I don't know why he did not U-turn there with Tornadus against... Um, oh, I guess he didn't want to take Helmet in case he st uh, stayed in, but uh, he goes back to Jirachi on Pex, and now he goes back to Finney. I mean, someone's playing safe. Um, I guess he can't really punish the Feeny, because this is kind of his Feeny switch in, so he's just got to... But, I mean, if Luigi keeps getting these threats in, but, uh... Then, I mean, Tangrowth on Feeny and Terrain is also decent, since regen and threats with Giga Drain and knockoff and everything. But, uh, he gets... He's always going for Jirachi, which Tangrowth is also like, you know what, I'll take the knockoff. And Torn isn't lasting forever with Knock and that, but he goes to Tyranitar on the Torn this time. Um... Uh, Decides to start pressing his advantage, so he's really getting it in gear now. Yeah, uh, Luigi's threat is really... I mean, he's got to get some hazards, and uh, so he's really got to be... Uh, I don't know, I think that turn versus drill when it was forced to spin. Getting Jirachi in to set up rocks, and then getting drill to force the spin. Then that's like your avenue for Greninja, so you can start getting those spikes up. Because that is actually some pressure you can start to exert. Small while was neutered in the beginning of the game, so... So, uh, we see an interesting choice from Torn in Bloom Doom, which has a Z Grass Knot, which would not have killed the Tar, but Solon was clearly scouting for a Z Fight. Um, says Luigi assumed that he was just going to try to pursue it. Uh, so Bloom Doom is clearly for Rotom, which is, I mean, that's, it's a nice lure. Uh, Rotom is annoying to Greninja and Feeny and even Mawile since it's faster. And Lando and Jirachi. So, yeah, I, I can dig that. Uh, not of much use here, but, you know. So, Misty Terrain is going to run out now. So, uh, Luigi smartly switches to, uh... Oh, he, he decides to risk the burn and gets up his rocks and so does not go to extra drill. So now he's got some pressure going. And now he goes right to Greninja. On the fas... Dude, I don't know if that was a smart... Well, I guess Finny isn't really a counter and Torn's at low health, but you gotta make this count, man. You gotta spike up. You can't just be flailing around with Hydros or whatever. And he gets the spike, so now the hazards are in play. So now, if... Because uh, Extra Drill does not really come in for free on anything except for Jirachi. So, and now he's going to take damage as it gets hit. Of course, uh, Solwyn's Gliscor also has Luigi on a timer. Um, but Luigi's looking uh, pretty scary here. Of course, Solwyn still has the option since Greninja just ate a facade for a ton of damage. So it doesn't want to switch into anything but an SD or a Roost. So, uh, Nature's Madness going off, and now here comes Mawile, baiting in that Tang and going to Torn, ideally. Um, maybe just going to Torn for the regen, since, uh, he might think, well, you don't have, uh, Thunder Punch, but he's gotta be careful of the Greninja now that, uh, he doesn't have Leftovers and Hazards drop. So he just, he decides to, uh, so Tangroth just gets scared out, and he U-turns out of Pex, and back comes Feeny for more Nature's Madness action. Oh, he goes to Mawile. I guess he's really committed to this, although he's not, he's gonna have to go back to Torn, because... No, he just tries to... I think that was a really bad... He gets the paralysis to... Get, uh, that was a really, really bad move. I think Finny was just a clear, clear superior move to keep going for Nature's Madness. And at that point, with the hazards down and taunt, um, then something would have happened. So, I, and going for the Thunder Punch, like he was actually going to risk the Toxapex, and he still has um, Tangro. That was a really bad move, in my opinion. So... And he, and he gets rewarded for it. A full para could be game changing now. Um, if the Jirachi has Healing Wish, then I guess Mawile doesn't mind as much, but it's, it's, it's a big deal. So we see U turn out of 
Jirachi making an appearance, and here comes Greninja. Uh, this is also going to be a defensive Jirachi, as it protects Greninja's face. And uh, Dark Pulse coming out. Now, I don't know if Luigi should risk this Dark Pulse, because if he just Dark Pulses into Titar, and then it pursuits, then Bliscor is going to just... It might just sweep. So, I don't think you risk it. I think, alright, you showed it. Uh, this Jirachi's not a threat. Go back to your own Jirachi. Go to Finny. Do something. Don't just let this... Don't just pulse away. And he pulses away! And Jirachi lives, amazingly, and he misses Toxic. Oh, that sucks. That really, really sucks. That's awful. Um, yeah, that's that's really bad. Obviously, but if that Toxic, then Gliscor was on even more of a timer because now it didn't even have to worry about getting up Hazard or uh, Rocks or hitting Greninja on the Switch. It just would have... Just every time Greninja's in, then it's a problem, so... Oh, I think that was, that was not a smart move. Um... Yeah, on, on multiple counts. Um, yeah, and you might think, well, just go to T-Tar, play it safe. But with hazards down, it's not as easy to play safe. It's not as safe in the first place. And if he, uh, if he doubles out to Lando or something, the Toxic would have been good there. So, But, you know, crippling the Greninja itself would have been amazing. Because Greninja is one of the few threats to Sol uh, uh, Solwyn's team. And, and he pulses into T-Tar again. I mean, even rocks should annoy you. So, I don't know. I think this was not played well at all. I mean, if he doesn't have Pursuit, then, you know, so be it. But Sand was... Even Sand would have been good. Sand now makes, makes uh, sure that Ranger can't even eat another facade. So, yeah, I think that was just a terrible move. And even get him getting rocks up was just... Ugh. Very, very wasted. I think uh, that turn where he didn't go to Finney on Pex when it was at 70 and said went to Mawile and just thunder punched and that just... And then the whole Greninja thing, I mean, he was still okay, but... Yikes. Um, and now he lets him... Does this not have Taunt? Because that's the only reason you would ever, ever, ever um, let him recover there. And so it's kind of challenging him to use to use Taunt in the first place. Um, I mean, losing leftovers is huge for Luigi here, but he mu just must not have it. Which is weird. And now he's got to contend with a Skull Burn. Okay, so I guess he's Nature's Madness, Moonblast, Moonblast Skull, Defog. Um, since this guy doesn't have it. And I guess he doesn't want to rely entirely on Scarf Lando. I mean, I guess, man. Uh, now he's going for the burn on Pex. But, oh, that's really... Not having Taunt? I mean... I don't know about this one. I mean, Mono Skull generally gets the job done. I mean, I guess maybe he was afraid of Lod uh, Mega Latios or something. But I, I don't know. He has Jirachi. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. And Pex gets the Scald burn first, and now... Burned, no lefties pecs. So now, since the Greninja managed to dodge the Toxic, I guess Dark Pulse Flinch, Dark Pulse Crit, or uh, Toxic Miss all would have been good. I mean, Dark Pulse Crit means it evolves. Um, and Jirachi's not even there for a Hazard Sack to prevent the Ash later. But, oh man, the no Taunt Fanny. Yikes. So... I mean, it's, it's still anyone's game, but Luigi has gotten away with murder here. I guess I kind of get the Mawile thing uh, now, not going to Feeny and uh, Madness thing. But, I mean, at least go Torn or something. I don't know. That would risk nothing either. I mean, even if he scalds into Torn, who cares? You turn back into Feeny and then back into Torn, and you're just making sure he's not getting up the rocks, and you still pressure him, and you're wasting his Toxapex PP, and uh, I just think that was very poorly done. Uh, as was the Greninja on uh, Jirachi sequence. So now this elongated stall war is... Well, I mean, Pex losing recovers... I mean, it's already lost more than half. That can be big for the end game. I mean, that's what Finny's kind of trying to do here. Run it out of those, because it's only losing health. 
when Pex uses Scald, he doesn't have infinite Scalds either. I just don't know why he's... I guess he doesn't want to defog his own hazards, but... Alright, Gliscor comes in. Scalds. Um, he's not going to be able to roost that off, but I guess he can threaten Feeny down since... Hmm. Just trying to burn more PP, I guess, but that Scald's doing a ton. Doesn't really want to switch Tangrowth in because Moonblast threat and Scalds with Hazards up is going to still be in the way, so... Yeah, Solwyn's not in a great place here at all. He might have just concede and go for the Earthquake uh, KO. Or not KO, but the Earthquake weakening to put it in. No, he's going to sack the Jirachi. And go to, uh, I assume, Drill or Tank. Probably not Tango. Moonblast does too much. Um, since it's Helmet. But I think he has to go to Drill. Yep. Um, oh, he goes for the Spin. All right. Does he go to Tang? Does, uh, does he go to Tar for Sand? And then Tang or Pex? He goes to Tang. Here comes Torn. Not going to be defogging anything. Does he just drain? Nope, he gets parried. Still got to switch out of this. And he has the freest U-turn ever. I mean, staying in on Helmet sounds like a nice idea. But uh, it's, it's just too risky. Hmm. Was it too risky? I guess he does need it to actually beat the Finny. Yeah, so Luigi presses his advantage and goes to Jirachi to get his... Well, he might want to iron head the T-Tar lest it crunch the hell out of his Jirachi, but probably just going to want to get the rocks back up. Yep, and now those rocks are staying. Gliscor is a threat, though, because it roosts here, and if it's not actually combating Finny one-on-one -on -one with Finny at... Oh, it does have Healing Wish. So what's going to come back? Mawile? Finny? It's Mawile. With a paralyzed tank. Thunder Punch, my god. Uh, I don't think he's going to stay in here. I think he's going to go to Lando. Or he just goes for Ice Punch. Oh. So it's... I guess that's a pretty cool set. Um, Alright, that was pretty well done. Oh, uh-oh. What's, what's happening here? He subs... Looking for the para, and was that really the wisest course of action? I mean, let's look at how much Gliscor is doing to uh, Mawile. Let's assume it doesn't have no bulk, so for the best case scenario. Yeah, I guess after the helmet, then, uh. Yeah, 78, so yeah, it was a roll to KO. That's against zero bulk, so... Yeah, maybe not. Plus, he would probably get chased out by T-Tar, so... I guess it didn't hurt to look for the para. Because that would just... That would just really be the nail in the coffin. So... Moal's gonna sub here. And... I'm not sure about this worry seed. Um... Hmm. What surprised me was when Mawile was against Gliscor, I thought he would play it safe and, you know, get it in against Pex or something. Um, and he could pivot with Lando, he could pivot with Torn, and, you know, maybe get Greninja in on uh, Gliscor. That would be nice because Pex is knocked and burned, T-Tar's low, Tangrowth gets smacked, so I thought going for it with Greninja might have been a better move. I mean, healing was your Mawile, great, because the bulk can be huge, um, but, yeah, and now the worry seed, I'm not sure about, um, uh, no, I, because 
Mawile was in a. Uh, in Mawile, pretty much goes down to HP Fire. Well, maybe not, but with Helmet, it, it would you know at least finish it off. And that's the thing you really need it for, since Finny's down. And I mean, Greninja is looking scary at this point too. But um, yeah, I, I don't know because. I think HP Fire was just the move. Is he's probably gonna kill? He's gonna kill you with Ice Punch anyway. So and um, I just don't see a. The only scenario where that works is where um, when uh, Mawile Thunder Punch is looking for Pex, and I mean you'd prefer to. I guess okay, I can see it. He wants to um, preserve his health. Um, and not sub on the Toxapex switch. All right, I don't know what the fuck just happened. It's part of my language, but uh, my computer shut off because uh, my um, power cord was unplugged uh, and it ran out of battery, and I did not notice. So I don't know what happened, but it looks like we're still in business. Okay, so uh, thank you, OBS. Thank you. Right, so I think that he was like, okay, if I sub on Pex then it brings me down to this health, right? And then he can go back to Thunderous, or uh, Thunderous. Then he can go back to uh, Tangrowth on Thunder Punch, and then two helmets will take me out. So I'm just gonna be um, be safe and predict. Um, I'm just gonna be safe and predict uh, the Huxmix with Thunder Punch. Um, and even if he you know, just ice punches on Pex, then that can still, he, that can still pivot, um, he wants to predict the thun, uh, Pex with either Thunder Punch or Sub, uh, just so that he doesn't lose health, um, when Tangrowth switches back in on Thunder Punch and Ice Punch, so he wants to stay ahead of it, because if he Thunder Punches Pex, the game is just straight up over. Um, and, but I still think even if you're predicting that with Soul Wind, then you just go for HP Fire because even if he does Thunder Punch, then you gotta um, you gotta break that. Um, you, you gotta you're just gonna take it out with Helmet plus HP Fire, and uh, you gotta break the sub if he subs. So he worry seeds and now he's in a really bad spot. Now he's got to go to the Pex on Ice Punch, which thankfully Thunder Punching behind the sub would be just insane. So. Um, and now he's in that position again where he can go back to Tang on the T-Punch. But he goes for the Focus Punch as a nice middle ground, so he's still going to be doing a ton no matter what. So that was, that was intelligent, and that did, a, that did more than the first time. Um, and it takes it out, in fact, so he gets the roll. So now he's got to sack one of Heatard or Gliscor to break the sub and then finish it off with the other. So he, he chooses Gliscor because Gliscor can beat Finny, Lando, Torn. It's just Greninja that stands in his way. 
So he's going to be at full health too, so no risks versus Finney slash uh, Torn. And he's even got sand for uh, to wear them down to help wear them down. But I don't think that's the move. I think the move is Greninja. And now it's Surf versus Fuck. That's what I meant to do. I've been dropping a lot of F-bombs in this. I'm sorry. I, I don't remember what turn we were on. I just skipped ahead. Uh, let's go to 70. Let's go to 80. No, that's... Yeah, okay, we're there. Um, okay, so he takes that out, uh, preventing Tor from switching in. And now Greninja comes in. So, it's Dark Pulse on Gliscor staying in. Or Facade... Or, Facade. Um, Gliscor on staying in. Or Surf on Pex. Well, with Sand Up, it's... Honestly, you probably just go for Surf. Or Hydro, if you have it, I guess. Uh, that is the standard. I keep forgetting. Because Pex is low on Recovers. You could just switch out and do it again later. So, yeah, you 100% go for the Water move here. Anything more is superfluous. Uh, since Sand, Rocks, Burn, no lefties. He does go for the Hydro, and... Hmm. I mean, Greninja's taking Sand itself, so you kind of want to... Be careful, because you don't want it to be in Stealth Rock. I guess Lando can pull off a defog. Um, and Feeny comes in. Just to be a little more annoying. Yes, yeah, so Pex recovers up, as it is obliged to do. So, now Feeny is losing health too, and cannot prevent Toxapex from recovering. However, the Greninja still is a problem. So he's going to go for Scalds, of course, superior to Moonblast, since uh, Gliscor coming in. And Solwyn is also going to try to chip it down. Sand runs out here. So now he's in the process of losing health, while Finny will remain at 31% unless he attacks it. He's only got two recovers, so this is looking really not good, especially since he forces damage, uh, greater damage with Nature's Madness. Alright, so Gliscor comes in on a Madness. I don't know how necessary that Madness was in retrospect, since, you know, just forced the recover, and, I mean, I think that Sc Scald was a lot better, but I guess it doesn't real. Well, I mean, no, it kind of does matter, because Greninja could have Dark Pulsed, and now we're in a similar position. He has two more Stealth Rock switch-ins. This one will bring him to 16, 17. Um, and he, yeah, he goes for Hydro again, because he's only got the one recover left. No, he goes for the Dark Pulse! He predicts. I don't know how necessary that was. I mean, you still have the sack, and I, I, mean, I guess if you're really certain that he's not staying in, because he's just forced to switch into Pex, but I think Hydro was perfectly fine there. Since you have Torn, even, and Lando, you can U-turn, and you can attack, and, you know, then you're good. Um, I mean, okay, I guess he, you have to, you don't want to force a situation where, uh, no, if Greninja stays alive to do its thing, then uh, it, plus the other Pokemon, will win, because um, Greninja beats Gliscor, and uh, and um, if Pex can't switch into it anymore, then the other Pokemon will beat us, since it only has one recover. So uh, He doesn't even push, push the issue with Dark Bolt. I thought the whole point of that was so you could you know attack it down, but no, he uh, goes to Lando to eat the Scald, He's still out of pulse range, and then, so, oh, what the heck? He's, he's got to go for the flinch, I guess. Um, rather than going, someone's timer dropped to five seconds there. Uh, rather than going torn, I guess, then it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I guess you do have to, even baneful bunk. Oh, I don't know if that was the move. I don't know if that was it. He puts himself in pulse range. 
I think he had to scald and then let Gliscor beat Torn. Oh, and that's that's going to be it because Gliscor can't take two pulses and then it evolves and that's that. So yeah, I think he just had to scald there. Um, Luigi was really going for that burn. And uh, with that, Luigi is the champion of Smogan Tour 27. And uh, so, well done to him, and really tough luck to slow end. I, I gotta say, the, this was not played that well, um, this one. I mean, both players made some really nice moves, but um, there, were, there were also some uh, some screw-ups and some, some luck on top of that. Some really bad luck, admittedly. Some just, uh, the last two games were really plagued by that. So, uh, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you next time.